All right, in the last video, we were able to uh, load our questions from the open trivia uh, DB. So being able to call an API and load those in means we don't have to store them. We don't have to create all of our questions. Uh, this is a great use case in general for API. So if you're looking for data, see if you can find a public API in general. Uh, and then uh, in our application, when we start here, we have this we have this kind of delay where we show some dummy question information just because we have it kind of hard coded in here. What we're going to do, let's go ahead and take this stuff out. Let's delete all of these. Okay, so we've got all of our question information hidden. So now when we when we refresh, uh, we should just kind of see this blank screen. Now this is obviously not very good, right? Because we want to, we don't want to show them just a blank screen before we load our data. So this is where we're going to come in and do our loader, uh, just to kind of give the user an idea that we're taking some time to do something. The game will be ready in a second. So all we're going to do in our HTML is going to uh, create a div with an ID of loader. All right, so that's all we're going to do there. And it's going to sit right on top of the game. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to add the hidden class to our game to start. So we'll hide the game and you don't see anything because we need to add our styles for loader, but we could say loading in here. So you'll see there that is, but we don't actually need text. What we're going to do is style that with CSS to make an actual loader. So we're going to hide our game by default and then we'll go in and show our loader uh, initially. And then when we finish loading, we'll switch that over. And when we finish loading, we'll switch that over to show our game. So now let's open up our game CSS and we'll add the styles at the bottom here for our loader. So what we want to, let me show you just really quickly, if you guys can see real quick what this loader looks like. Oh, it didn't actually show there. I guess it's coming in pretty fast so we're not seeing it. Uh, so we'll just kind of talk through what we're doing and go from there. So we're gonna start with uh, selecting our loader and uh, we wanna make a circle for the most part, a spinning circle. So we're gonna give a border, and this is gonna be 1.6 rem solid white. And then we'll have a border radius is 50%. So this is how we're gonna get kind of the circular effect. And we'll do a border top is 1.6 rem solid. And then this is where we're gonna use a color. So 5.6 A5EB, does that look right? Yeah. And we'll do a width of 12 rem and a height of 12 rem, which again is basically uh, 120 pixels. So if I save this and let it show up on the screen, you can see uh, because of, and actually let's just tweak a little bit of this so we can kind of break down how it's working. Let's select our loader. And just to show you without the border radius being 50, you get kind of a square here. And this makes a little bit more sense. So with this, uh, with it being looking like a square, you can see you've got your border of white then you're basically overriding the top border to be a blue color, uh, which is pretty obvious here. And then uh, you've got a height and width for this to be 120 pixels, basically. So then adding in this border radius uh, makes it into a circle. So what we want to do is we want to have basically this entire thing spin. So we're going to use an animation to do that. And uh, the way we do animation is we'll do uh, keyframes and then we'll name the animation. So we'll call it spin. And then uh, we basically want to set styles for different percentages or different uh, different breakpoints, if that's a good way to put it, along the, the spin cycle. So we're basically just going to have a start and finish. Uh, and so it's going to start at uh, 0%. And here it's going to transform and it's going to start at 0 degrees. And you can actually type in DEG there to get degrees. And then it's going to finish by having spun not 199%, but 100%. So that's going to be the finish. And it will have rotated 360 degrees at that point. So the, and uh, this is a transform. All right. So you won't actually see anything happen now because we haven't applied this animation to our loader even after we save. So to do that, we need to say animation. And we want to say we want to use the spin, an spin animation. We want it to last two seconds. We want it to be linear, which means it's going to kind of constantly, uh, constantly make progress as it spins. It's not going to spin faster or slower at the beginning or the end. And then we want it to infinitely loop. And so we save here now and we should see our loader looks pretty good. Now this is actually, if you guys are interested, uh, this is from 
W3 schools, uh, build a loader. So this is exactly what they do there. This is the quickest and easiest way that I've seen to build a loader without bringing in an extra library, doing something really, really fancy. So you guys can obviously tweak this and make it look a little bit different if you want to, but if you want an extra, just kind of written version of how to do this, you can go and look at, uh, look at this example on W3 schools. All right, so we've got, so we've got our loader. Now the only thing we need to do is uh, when we load our questions and that happens in the here. So when we, when we, right before we call start game, we know we've got our questions. So we're ready to show the game and hide the loader. So we want to get a couple more uh, references to DOM objects. The first one is going to be, and this is my get ID shortcut. First one is going to be just loader. All right. And then the second one is going to be game. And in here, in here, we can call game dot class list and then remove the hidden class. And so just this by itself will do something a little bit weird. So it'll show these two side by side, which is not what we want. And then we want to take the loader dot class list and add hidden. So we want to basically just swap these out. Now you'll see your loader stays there at the beginning. Then as you get your questions loaded, it will go away and you can see your questions. So uh, this, this works really well. We're gonna make this a little bit better. Uh, and the way we're gonna make this a little bit better is right now we are, we are loading our questions and then showing the screen. But technically we haven't actually displayed the new question yet. So it's hard to, it's hard to see this difference because it's minute, it's milliseconds. But really the optimal way to do this is to take this and put it inside of the start game function and we'll put it right at the very end so that we don't show our game until we absolutely know that we've got our first question and it's been added and displayed on the screen. So you won't really see a difference here when we save, you'll still see the same effect. There's a loader and then uh, when, it, when, we lo when we finish loading the questions and displaying the first question, now that loader will go away and we can see our game. All right, so I think that's a pretty neat effect to add. I think this is great for user experience as well. Uh, you definitely don't wanna show like dummy data uh, while the user is waiting. You also don't really wanna show a blank screen. So uh, by adding a loader, you give them some sort of context to let them know that something is happening, which is really, really great. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video and I will see you in the next one.